Welcome to ESD School, brought to you by Attract. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single episode. Enjoy the video. Dear all, today we will um, discuss about uh, one particular clinical situation, which are the ESD uh, for the neoplastic lesions that harbor a small area of deep invasive pattern, CUDO 5N or SANO 3B, but in a very tiny area. So it is part of the ESD school for clinical particular situations. And uh, why did we go in this way for this kind of lesion? Um, as you know, ESD is one of the good options to remove the lesion that uh, are arboring some risk factor of T1 cancer, like non-granular LST, macronodules over one centimeter. Um, we use the connect classification 2C to define this uh, uh, orange area. Uh, for the, the lesion which uh, arbor uh, deep invasive pattern 5N or san 3 b classically it was in, an indication for biopsy sample and surgery. But some of the lesions are arboring a very small area of a destroyed pattern, like this one. Uh, so you can see that the pattern is uh, destroyed, but only on a demarcated area, small one. Um, and uh, we attempted to do diagnostic ESD, particularly for frail patients, in order to get a pathology sample and be sure of uh, which patient should go to surgery and should, which patient can uh, uh, be treated only by endoscopic submucosal dissection with an R0 resection, uh, but on the specimen there is a low risk of further recurrence and therefore we could accept uh, a surveillance. So um, this kind of uh, small area are part of the connect classification and we call it now 2C+, uh, it means a small area of less than 10 mm with a focal area of invasive pattern. We did a multicenter study on this topic a few years ago uh, with uh, 124 patients uh, published in endoscopy. And in this uh, 124 patients with 126 diagnostic ESD, uh, we had a, a success of 95% uh, with only a R0 resection rate of 76.7%. Uh, uh, but in this, 26% of the patient had a curative resection, completely curative. Uh, it means an intramucosal carcinoma or a carcinoma with a, a T1 invasion of less than 1000 microns. So 26% totally cured by the ESD and 30 patient, 30% uh, 30 of the patient, sorry, which had a risk for lymph node, but a low risk according to, to the results of the of the Dutch uh, series where the only criteria of invasion above 1000 microns is probably not an independent risk factor of lymph node recurrence. So probably for patients with only invasion above 1000 microns, but without budding, without lymphovascular invasion, endoscopic resection could become a, a resection which is enough followed by a strong uh, and a strict surveillance to detect the 3 or 4% of recurrences that can uh, appear later. So we have two different solutions now for this kind of lesion arboring a small area of uh, focal deep invasive pattern uh, which are inferior to 15 or probably more inferior to 10 mm to increase the chance of curative resection. Two different solutions are present. In the colon where an endoscopic intermuscular dissection is not possible, we will see here ESD with traction. And just after, I will show you intermuscular resection for the lesion in the rectum where the muscle is larger. So you can see this tiny lesion, which is only 12 mm, uh, in uh, the sigmoid colon, in a uh, 76 years old patient with a lot of comorbidities, so very difficult to, to think about a surgery. Uh, we did the current strategy, which is uh, 
complete circumferential incision with very large margin because uh, it is very difficult to begin the resection close to the lesion which is invasive in the submucosa. You should have large margin to increase um, the potential of access into the submucosa before getting into the worst area of invasion. So please take lar large margin. It will help you to see but also to fix uh, the multipolar traction device. Um, and here uh, we use the ATRAC system uh, in order to, to have an adaptive traction. You can see here we have fixed it on the oral side and now on the anal side. Uh, so we have a two point traction. We use the rubber band to fix it to the opposite wall in order to get a 90 degrees. Uh, 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 traction. Here we use an additional loop because the space was very small and we begin the ESD which at the beginning is quite normal because the submucosa is normal but once we will get under the lesion the space will become very very small because uh, the, the area is, um, is reduced by the invasion into the submucosa so we can with this device increase the traction by tightening the loop um, and it will create a new force of traction that will open the space uh, and expose this very tiny submucosa we want to, to cut. Uh, the aim here is to uh, avoid touching the lesion to be R0 on the histopathology and also to avoid touching the muscle to avoid any perforation. Uh, in this case, uh, the invasion finally was 1,500 microns in the submucosa without budding, without lymphovascular invasion. And finally, uh, the MDT discussion said uh, we can follow this patient um, very strictly with a CT scan every six months to detect a recurrence. Uh, but surgery is not evident for such a patient because comorbidities are high and in this case the risk of recurrence with 1500 microns is in between 1 and 3 or 4 percent uh, of lymph node metastasis so um, this patient can be considered cured uh, at more than 95 percent so in this case uh, ESD can cure the patient without uh, morbidity like uh, we can have with a conventional surgery. So probably it is a good option, but only 96% of uh, R0 resection. And in the rectum, there is a new option, which is called the endoscopic intermuscular dissection, uh, proposed by Leon Moons and colleagues in Netherlands. Uh, only possible in the rectum where the two muscles are easy to identify but which is probably better uh, for diagnostic resection because um, you can improve your chance of being R0 on the deep margin by cutting not in the submucosa but into the intermuscular space and you do not a submucosal dissection but an intermuscular one increasing the chance of being R0 on your vertical margin. Unfortunately, it's not feasible uh, in, the, um, in the colon uh, and ESD with traction is still an option for, for this kind of cases or uh, if the lesion is very small and easy to, to get, EFTR can also be an, op an option for the, the very tiny lesion, uh, but the rate of R0 are, are really decreasing when the lesion is uh, bigger. So here we do an incision and a trimming all around the lesion. We fix the initial traction on the mucosa uh, on the, the area we want to remove. Uh, it is the beginning of the of the resection but you will see once we will get into the intermucular space we uh, can use an additional loop to fix it on the muscle layer in order to have an exposure not only of the mucosa we want to remove but also 
on the circular muscle layer we want to remove. So here you can see the initial part of the resection, which is like an ESD. But very quickly, when the muscle is visible, we will voluntarily uh, go into uh, the uh, intermuscular space. You can inject, thanks to knife uh, with injection, you can inject the intermuscular space and pass under the uh, circular layer. And therefore, what you want to resect is not, is not the mucosa with some submucosa, but mucosa, submucosa, and the circular layer in order to increase your chance of being R0 on the deep part. And you can add a traction with the additional loop of the attract device on the muscle itself, and therefore you have a good exposure of the submucosal, of the intermuscular space, sorry, uh, because you tracked not only the submucosa, which is soft, but also the circular layer. And once again, when um, it begins to be difficult because the tension is not strong enough, you can tighten again the device, uh, and therefore it will increase again the traction and increase the exposure of the intermuscular space in order to have not only a resection of the submucosa but also the circular layer to get a R0 resection even for deep invasive cancers or for very small T2. And in the experience of Leon Muntz, they already uh, do some intermuscular dissection for small T2 cancers uh, with um, uh, after uh, some uh, um, options like uh, radiation therapy or chemotherapy for this small T2 instead of uh, systematic surgery. And what remains after your resection is the longitudinal layer of the muscle. And as demonstrated, for example, for TEM resections, it's not obliged to close everything because if you close, you, you have more symptoms of uh, a functional disease by the reduction of the rectum than uh, by a, a natural closure. So in conclusion, ESD for lesions with deep invasive pattern area is feasible, quite safe, but inexperienced ends. But for my side, it's impossible to perform this kind of traction of um, resection, sorry, uh, without traction and without multipolar traction. And to be uh, honest, the adaptive traction gives you another chance to increase the traction if during the procedure the traction goes down because of your uh, dissection. And it will help to flare out the lesion uh, on the submucosa or on the muscle itself if you use intermuscular dissection. And this traction is helping a lot uh, for the worst area where the invasion is uh, close to the muscle and where uh, uh, the, the submucosa is very thin. Thank you very much for attention. I hope it will be uh, interesting for you for this kind of cases. Uh, you should not begin uh, ESD by this kind of uh, difficult cases, but uh, once you get uh, experience, uh, it's a good way to enlarge the very low morbidity treatments, even for T1 cancers of the colon and the rectum. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with your colleagues. Until next time, this is ESD School by Attract.